So I have a question for you. I want to get real. Mm. Can you share your biggest mistake and then your biggest regret? biggest mistake was approaching business with a sense of naivete. Um, and many of you guys know what uh, we went through in the Elevation Group in 2012 when we ran into a very, a very bad man in, uh, from Australia who defrauded a bunch of really good people. And, uh, and yeah. Um, and so we are blessed in the fact that we live in an industry where everyone tries to help each other. It's a very cooperative, trust-based world that does not exist anywhere else, where people actually promote other people's products who would traditionally be considered a competitor. Mm -hmm. You know, me promoting Fernie's products or Ray's or anybody else's and them promoting mine. You just don't see that kind of synergy anywhere else in the real world, and it puts you in a, in a position of naivete is the word that I, I can use for it, because the way I, uh, you know, it's been my last 10 years of my career, it was um, coming from a standpoint of positive regard and trust because I didn't believe that someone would be stupid enough to screw people over in the internet age Yeah. because you hear about it. Yeah. And, um, and so unfortunately we trusted the wrong person and we didn't have any kind of you know, formal agreements other than a handshake, which is how I'd always done business in the past. And uh, we didn't do, you know, uh, the legal work that we should have. And uh, so that was the biggest mistake that I've ever made. Um, literally almost killed my business partner <laughs> who got cancer from the stress. Yeah. Um, so that was, a, that was a very big growing up moment for me. And the, the other half of your question was what? Biggest regret. Biggest regret. Uh, it has to do with that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> meeting, meeting that person. <laughs> Imagine. Running into that individual, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, there's things happen for a reason, and you can't control what happens to you sometimes. You can only control with, you know, with, with the decision that you make and how you deal with it. And um, you can make the decision to be victimized by a situation like that, or you can uh, make the decision to learn from it and grow stronger from it. And it really put things in a new perspective for me as far as my priorities in life go. Yeah. Um, it very quickly became uh, less about, you know, what can I achieve or accomplish and... Uh, more about appreciation for what I have uh, at the present in the form of family and health and friends. And uh, my, lit I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, my perspective changed from it didn't matter how successful my, my businesses were anymore to if nobody's bleeding in front of me and, and dying, it's a good day. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it doesn't matter if I have a house or what car I'm driving anymore. It's like everybody's alive, everybody's healthy. It's been successful. And so that was a really good shift. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. And, and so I've always been impressed. I've learned a lot from you, by the way, just your character. And by the way, this man has character. Is that not true? I mean, how he deals with failure. Mm. So, um, so you were just born with superhuman powers, right? And you, I know, you were born I know. with superhuman yeah. powers. You didn't need any personal development or Correct, anything like yes. that because you already knew everything. Yeah. And uh, he does have a crystal ball, by the way, so he can predict the future as well. Uh, let's, I want to ask you about your, your personal life. Um, don't worry, not dating. <laughs> we won't go there. I want to ask you to talk about your son. Mm. Yeah, we, I, I don't even know if anyone's, you know, they, they, he only has one kid that he knows of. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, awesome no, I have, a, uh, I have a son named Chase who was... Uh, who is absolutely awesome. He's going to be five in August. Yeah. And uh, it is obviously really interesting going through parenthood for the first time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's interesting about him is you, you don't know how your kids are going to turn out, which is a scary proposition. Um, but really, it's the world that he's going to grow up in. And, you know, 10 years' time, 11 years' time, when it's, he's 16 and it's time to, you know, go to driving school, I really don't even know if there's going to be one. Sure. At that point. You're um, so optimistic. <laughs> well, 
from the fact that we're all going to have self-driving cars, TJ, not that the world's going to end. <laughs> I was going to go there, too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I thought that's what you're referring to, but anyway. Yeah, no. Um, you know, I, well, in your, in ten years' time, self-driving cars will be a thing of uh, of normalcy, and yeah. it will actually be more expensive to get a driver's license and have insurance than it will to let your car drive you places. And and so I'm very curious to see what that generation is going to mm -hmm. do. Uh, specifically with the development of AI by the time he's 20, the development of robotics by the time he's in his mid-20s. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the world's going to look like. And but you so, don't think it's going to, like, explode and everyone's going to die? Uh, well, you know... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I say it tongue-in-cheek, but kind of. Did anyone here, here get the, uh, the Be Prepared product I did with my Navy SEAL buddy? Any of y'all get any of that? Be one, prepared. Couple, he he just he here. just emailed it. Anyone anyone see that email about the be prepared product? It actually ended up in my spam folder. That one did, uh -huh. which was interesting. I had yeah. to dig for it. Cause, Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I uh, you know I believe a good a good character for any entrepreneur to have is to basically drive towards your goal and to envision the life that you want and move towards that in every capacity that you can, but to also have a fallback and a plan B yeah. for when shit doesn't work out. Yeah. And, um, you know, a contingency plan. And so not only do I practice that in business, but I also practice that in my personal life. I do too, because so. you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so back to Chase, would you yeah. say that that was a motivator for you to create Self-Made Man? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I really, I'm fascinated by your interviews that you did, and I've listened to a few of them, and yeah. they're just phenomenal. You get some crazy, ridiculously talented and uh, just cool people on that podcast. Well, you know, guys, and this is just, I, I don't know if it's a part of my personality type or what, but uh, I would hope that everyone here in this room can dedicate their time and energy while they're here on this planet to going as big as they possibly can and to do something that will change as many lives as possible. That's really what motivates me is, uh, you know, my biggest fear on my deathbed is not, um, my biggest fear is that I didn't do everything that I could or I didn't push myself far enough or I gave into some kind of fear to where I couldn't contribute as much as I could have. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when we when we look at around when we look around the world, specifically over the last couple of years, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed a serious degradation in the the values that uh, people tend to live or not live by these days. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, youth, but but even adults, all the way from you know the politicians in Washington down to you know, Obama, school <laughs> school teachers and and. Uh, and everything in between, the, the world we live in today is, is drastically different than the world we lived in you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, yeah. uh, or that existed. And if you've read Atlas Shrugged, uh, it's, a very, it's almost a prophetic step-by-step -step analysis of what is actually taking place right now. Who, and, who here has read Atlas Shrugged? That's like, I think that's a must-read for entrepreneurs. Would you agree? Yeah, there's a reason I have a a painting of it on my wall in, in my office. Yeah, yeah. it's a, a definitely a must-read book. Yeah. And Atlas Shrugged Atlas by Shrugged. Ayn Rand. And uh, it's basically, a, you know, the Bible for entrepreneurs, uh, if you will. And so, you know, I was sitting down having conversations with friends three or four years ago, and if you see this happening in society and you can see the end result and where it's going to go based on, you know, history lessons that are provided to you and examples like an atlas, uh, it's a very concerning situation. And so typically as entrepreneurs, we sit down and say, okay, well, what can we do to fix this? And so the question was, how do you change society for the better in a, in a long-term manner? Uh, and the answer that we came back with was you have to change the value set um, of the people who, who live in it, you know, and a yeah. big part of that is the men who live in it. And, um, you know, typically in the past, if you want to change society in a, in a, in a quick, in a, a quick and effective way, it's typically done through the barrel of a gun. Right. <laughs> that was obviously not an option. Yeah. And so well, you've, you've got enough guns to arm a small South American country though. Yeah. Well, that's plan B if the value thing got doesn't it. work okay. out. Yeah. Okay. No. 
Um, so the other answer is, well, you have to you have to change the value set that people live by and strive for, you know, day to day. And so, how can little old me have some kind of impact on that? And um, the best way that I could think of that I could personally contribute or make a difference in is to provide a platform that put mentors um, and leaders in front of the youth of, uh, of the world today. And these you know, are people you look up to as mentors. They are. They're, my, they're, for the most part, you know, okay. especially in the beginning, my mentors. I'm, I'm yeah. running out of, of people who would fit that category now. But essentially, the, the point of the show is to provide leadership and mentors to a new generation of men so that they can have positive uh, influences in their life and people that they can look up to and learn from. And, um, you know, so that's the point of that project. Um, now, is that something you're going to continue doing alongside? Yeah, it is. Uh, that's something I, I would like to do for 10, 20 years is really yeah. kind of a, a passion project. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that, that really was the inspiration for Self Made Man. And, you know, it's done really, really well. We're making a difference. I've gotten some of the best feedback I've ever gotten from that show. You know, this guy, this, this is, again, it's just an idea, and it's me putting other people who are experts on a platform, which is something all of us can do. Uh, I'm really not providing my unique ability to it in any way. I'm just the guest, and I have to say the first episode or two is horrible. Like, yeah, <laughs> the I thought of it was great. And stutters and, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, the, the content from the guest was horrible. My job as a host was absolutely horrific. Um, but that's totally fine. It's totally fine. You're going to screw up no matter what you do uh, in any endeavor. You know, the first. Does that make you guys feel better that that you know his first podcast sucked ass? I thought it was good, but, but. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it is what it is. The more the more important thing is to just get it going and then continue through the path, yeah. and you'll you'll eventually get better. And to not have incredibly high expectations for yourself uh, when you just uh, you know start something out. So, yeah. Do y'all want to ask some questions with the time we've got left? Yeah. Oh, I have one more question while they're getting that all going. Okay. Um, fun. Mm. What do you do for fun, man? Uh, shoot guns and race cars. <laughs> so. We're going to do that tomorrow. Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, be cool. Yeah, I got into racing in 2008, and I have definitely uh, become really addicted to that sport. That's, uh, if, well, the you first know, the step in recovery I, is admitting you have a problem. Yeah. Yeah, the day that I retire, my goal is to is to uh, is to go race cars full time uh, professionally, and so that's really what motivates me from a business standpoint. Awesome. Um, but I like racing because it is, a, is it is a sport that has consequences. Yeah. Um, you know, if you miss a basket when you take a shot, it's totally fine. You miss a, a swing, you know, when you're up to bat, totally fine. Screw up when you're racing cars. Or could jet be, skis. Yeah. Could be bad. And, um, I wish I had that picture of me in the hospital going like this in the gown <laughs> and you looking like you're freaked out. Yeah. That was an awesome picture. <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, no, so I think it's important for, for everyone to continue to push themselves in, in every yeah. way possible. And for me, I'm willing to... Uh, hmm. Put the, res put the responsibility on myself and, uh, and the people that I surround myself with to where I literally put my life on the line. Yeah. Um, because I think uh, if you're not doing that, it doesn't really count. And uh, so I think that's why racing appeals to me in a kind of morbid way. But it matters. Like what you're doing, every decision you make, every, every nth of a, of a degree of the gas pedal is the difference between hitting a wall or not. Yeah. And, um, and I like challenges like that. So. Awesome. Yeah. Do we have a mic, guys, that we can ask? Yep. Okay. Oh, so, great. Fantastic. Hands. First of, all, first of all, I wanted to thank Mike for being here. I followed you for several years. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The information you provided is, has been very uh, appreciative. Uh, the question earlier, you mentioned a book, and I'm not familiar with it. I just wanted to get more details on it. Atlas Shrugged, probably. Mm -hmm. Was yes. that it? That was it. Yeah. yeah. The fiction, author? fiction book uh, written by Ayn Rand uh, decades ago. Oh, okay. but, um, but really, if you read it over the last 10 years and what we've seen, it's it's unbelievably prophetic. It, it is really documenting what is happening around the world today. I've read some of her work, but not that one. Okay, yeah. great. Fountainhead probably. Um, actually, can you, can you share a few more books that you recommend or that you've, you've read that really have had an impact on you while they're oh, answering man. this question here? 
Um, you know, it's not really, I would say, books as much as courses. Really? The biggest, the biggest game changes for me have typically, typically come in the, fa in the form of, of the big courses, hmm. you know, over my career, whether it's on copywriting or mm -hmm. internet marketing or, or whatever it may cool. be, but it's, it's literally, you know, the one to two to five thousand dollar, gotcha. you know, gigs. I mean, I were, you know, we talk about buying information and training. I have a copywriting book, and unfortunately, I, the name escapes me. I think it's Gary Bensavenga. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You told me it's that story. a blue book. It's probably that big. It's paperback. It's not even hardback. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, basically Gary's one of the best copywriters in history, and it was his farewell, basically for his retirement. He and he actually retired, his, right? Yeah, as far as I know, put some of his <laughs> best uh, his best copywriting wisdom in that book. And it's literally just a book this big, and uh, it was five thousand uh, dollars. And he sold a limited number of those, and I obviously bought one. Was that an uncomfortable purchase for you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> because That's you awesome. know, one headline or one piece of sure. wisdom from that book yeah, will will make that back, you know, tenfold. One of the absolute most game changing courses that I've ever bought in my life uh, is Jeff Walker's product launch formula. Yeah. If you guys don't have that, huge mistake. Huge yeah. mistake. If you're launching products, of course. Well, that's anything. That's, yeah. that's the same thing as a, doing an affiliate promotion or mm -hmm. you know, a launch for your own opportunity. Any, any time that you would ever like to get a group of people organized around a, an event or a purchase decision. Yeah, you used it for your podcast, even. I use, that's why I said I use it yeah. every single... If you want to get a yeah. group of people motivated to go yeah. take an action, mm -hmm. uh, that's really what that course is all about. And really, that's what we do as marketers all the time. And uh, so Product Launch Formula is huge. And actually, you know, a great place to start is he launched uh, a book, uh, basically a, a much shorter version of his product on Amazon. You can go buy his book launch for $15. It's a great place to start. And uh, but that, that course has made me literally tens of millions of dollars. Awesome. So, Jeff Walker, Product Launch Formula, and the book is called Launch, and that's on Amazon. Cool. Okay, I'm Robert Lemus, and hey. I learned some great techniques how to build your brand for someone just starting out, but my question to you is, if you were just starting out in today's market, how would you start off to build your brand? Well, I think building a brand is a result of providing a lot of value. Uh, I've never really focused on building my brand ever. Uh, I mean, you guys, if you've known me for a while, I didn't have a personal website at MikeDillard.com until a year ago, <laughs> you know. So um, I've never focused on building my brand. I've just focused on, on, on creating stuff that I think will provide a lot of value. And as a result of that, your brand is formed. And uh, yet at the same time, one thing I do consciously keep in mind is who my target audience is and how I can be as relatable to them as possible in my marketing pieces. So the photos that I do have on MikeDillard.com are intentional. They're designed to appeal to a certain group of people uh, who have a similar set of values that I have or a similar set of beliefs or you know, whatever it may be. Uh, I, I have a picture of me you know, in my uh, training you know, gear with my assault rifle basically at my ranch as one of those pictures on that blog. And I have it there very intentionally even though it's going to turn off a ton of people and it's, some people are going to get pissed off and disgusted by it and never do business with me. I totally understand that. And there's a very conscious decision to, to keep it there and put it there because it's going to attract another group of people as well. And um, no, so for me, building a brand is about doing what you say you're going to do, providing a lot of value, having integrity over a long period of time, and, uh, and, and giving yourself enough time to build a brand, you know, which... It's typically going to take two, three, four, five years. Um, and so I think just making good business decisions as a, as a person is really the, the key to doing that in the long term. So, Yeah, good advice. Good advice. Anyone else? We've got time for a couple more questions? Hey, how's it going? My name is Chad. Uh, my question is, how would you switch your list from going from, you know, business opportunity or to, uh, you know, elevation question. then did now to hydroponics. How, how, how would that... Great question. Uh, involving people in the story. You know, uh, a lot of the emails that I send out these days, um, you know, or post on, on social media, it's personal stuff, my racing, you know, whatever I'm doing. But it's really just involving people in my life and what I'm doing and, and telling them why I'm making that transition and in, in, uh, involving them in the story and then and then also making sure that you connect the dot as to why it's important for them to follow it as well and why they would want to. 
um, and what they're going to get out of it. You know, what's in it for them is still something that needs to be addressed uh, as usual. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. It's just being, it's being a, a normal person, you know? So, awesome. Yeah. yeah it's, Thank you. It's great. One more question for the no Godfather. Pressure, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mike. This is Patty. And I don't really have a question. What I have is a big, huge thank you. Mm. I've been yeah. following you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been following you since almost the get-go, um, mm. back in 05. I have a paper copy of Magnetic Sponsoring that I've read on a yearly basis, and I've built my business based on your philosophies. Mm. Thank you. Oh, thank That's you. Awesome. Appreciate that. That's awesome. awesome. Cool. Yeah, to just kind of piggyback on that, um, man, you've changed so many lives, and uh, you continue to break new ground and uh, do the make the impossible possible, and it's just it's awesome to see. It's it's inspiring. It's inspiring for me, and it's inspiring for everyone else in this community. So we really appreciate you flying down here. And by the way, Mike has no ulterior motive. He's all, as he said, he's a man that practices what he preaches. He's here to give value. He's here to share with you. And uh, he will be um, around here for the rest of the day today. And yeah, that sounds great. Thank you guys for for having me and for all of y'all's support. Like uh, you know, I've I've met so many of y'all over the last 24 hours that have followed me for almost 10 years now, and yeah. uh, you're the reason I can do what I do. And uh, you know, thank you so much. I you know, it's not possible without your support. So I really do appreciate that. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. Awesome. Appreciate it. For a free 10-day online recruiting bootcamp to dive deep into rejection-free sponsoring methods, use the internet, click the link above, or go directly to EliteMarketingPro.com forward slash go. I'll see you there.